For as long as pretty much anyone can remember, the Ford Fiesta has been Britain's best-selling car. The reason for such popularity? Well, its mix of fun, style and affordability will probably have quite a lot to do with it. Recently, however, the unthinkable has happened. The Ford Fiesta has been ousted from the top spot of the UK car sales chart by this, the Vauxhall Corsa. What is it about the British brand's latest super mini that has captured buyers' imaginations? And does it really deserve to be top dog? That's what we'll be finding out in this twin test video. Before we get started though, subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel where you'll find lots more car video reviews. Also, remember to hit the bell icon on to turn on notifications so that you always know when a new video goes live. If style plays a part in your buying decision, then there's very little in it. I mean, just look at them from this rear three quarter angle. They're virtually indistinguishable. The Corsa we've got here is in luxury focused elite nav trim, while the Fiesta is in ST Line X edition, which is a sportier makeover. Both look smart, sophisticated and grown up. Another place where there's very little in it is in the boot. Just two litres of space separates our cars, according to the official figures, with the Fiesta's 311 litres just trumping the Corsa's 309. But while they're very closely matched, neither of our cars can match the most practical super minis in this area. The design of the boot is also virtually identical in our cars. Both have this sizeable lip that you'll need to haul heavy items over, and both have split folding rear seats that allow you to boost your cargo space. Although in both cars, there's a step in the floor where you do so, and the backrest lie at an awkward angle. Is there more to separate our cars for passenger space? Well, here in the Fiesta, things are surprisingly good. If you're six foot tall, you will find that you can get comfortable, even if you're sitting behind a driver of a similar size. Now, I'm only five foot four and a half. Clearly, there is plenty of headroom and legroom for me. If you are much taller than six foot, you might start to feel a little bit hemmed in. The soft middle seat and narrow transmission talon in the floor means squeezing three in is comfier than it would otherwise be, but the narrowness of the car means that doing so still isn't awfully comfortable. Climb into the Vauxhall's back seat and guess what? There's very little difference in space back here. Can you spot a pattern emerging? Well, there might be a little centimetre here and there, but there's not really anything in it. In fact, you'll barely notice it. Again, you wouldn't want to squeeze three people in here for any longer than absolutely necessary. And when it comes to rear space generally, other super minis such as the Seat Ibiza and Honda Jazz are better than both of these cars. We have found one area where we can separate our contenders though, and that is getting in and out of the back seats. So in the Fiesta, the door openings are really big, and so your entry and exit are fairly unimpeded. The Corsa, however, has much smaller doors and a piece of bodywork here, which you have to kind of curl your body around to get out because it sticks out further than your seat, which is a little awkward. Happily, you'll have no such problem getting into the front of the Corsa. And once you're in, the seat is supportive and there's bags of adjustment, so you should be able to get a comfortable driving position. And all cars except the entry-level SE model get this seven-inch screen for your digital dials. This can be figured in various ways to display or prioritize different types of information. And not only does it look good, the display is clear and easy to read too. Every Corsa gets a built-in touchscreen infotainment system with important functionality such as Bluetooth, DAB radio, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This higher end version gets a 10 inch screen whereas more basic versions get a 7 inch screen and this one also has built in sat nav. The system is fairly easy to find your way around and the screen sensitivity and software speed are also fine if not flawless. There is one annoying thing with it though. You have physical ventilation controls, but even so, if you want to change the direction of the airflow, you have to delve into the touchscreen, which is both irritating and distracting. Quality wise, things feel very grown up in here. The design and the color scheme are quite conventional and conservative, and most of the surfaces directly in front of you feel dense and nicely finished. If you look sideways and lower down, you don't have to search too hard to find plastics that are rather less lustrous. But that's true of pretty much any car in the Super Mini class, and they certainly don't ruin the overall feeling of quality. 
by now it'll come as no surprise and it's a very similar story here in the Fiesta. Again, the materials directly in your eyeline are glossy and tactile, but look elsewhere and you'll find rougher, less appealing ones. But again, the effect isn't ruined and the Ford feels like it has the voxel matched for quality. The Fiesta's instruments are physical rather than digital, so the layout is of the like it or lump it variety, but they're still very clear and easy to read. All versions have an eight inch touchscreen system too. While the software seems to be a bit glitchier than the courses, stations, get rid of sport and put some dance music on, there we go. The menus themselves are actually probably a little bit easier to navigate your way around. And look, a full complement of physical aircon control, so no touchscreen needed there, which is good in our book. There are one or two other items to grumble about with the layout though. For instance, the steering wheel is smattered with small fiddly buttons, and there's this small cluster of other buttons tucked away down between the seats that are difficult to get to. So, it's pretty much neck and neck between our two cars up until this point, but will that still be the case after we've taken them for a drive? Course the first, I think. If you look at the engine ranges of our two cars, they're very similar, but you guessed that already, right? So the Corsa is available with a 1.25 litre three cylinder engine in 75. 100 or 130 brake horsepower guys, while the Fiesta is available with a one litre engine in 75, 100, 125 or 155 brake horsepower. Not only are they very similar on power and performance, they're also quite similar on price. Match up the equivalent engine choice and trim level on each car and the Corsa comes up just a couple to a few hundred pounds less. The engine we have in this car is the 100 horsepower mid-range unit and it's teamed in this car with an 8-speed automatic gearbox. And we have to say it is a slightly strange union. The engine chunters away when it's idling and as you shift it into drive and move your right foot from the brake to the throttle, there's a distinct pause before any power gets fed in. It's fine once you're up and running though and the transmission moves up and down the gears smoothly and the engine is gutsy enough to have you moving along at a reasonable rate. If you venture into the upper half of the rev range though, it can sound a little raspy. And no matter how many revs you have on the dial, you will feel some vibrations coming through the steering wheel and pedals. Otherwise, the course's road manners feel just as grown up as the rest of the car. First of all, the ride is good. You do feel a little bit of trembling through the floor over smaller bumps at low speeds, but bigger ones seem to be absorbed very well. So overall, it's comfortable. There's lots of grip too, so the handling is very assured, even if it doesn't always feel it. You feel some pronounced body roll in bends, and while the light steering is good for low speed parking maneuvers, it doesn't instill much confidence when you're going quicker, and neither do the remote feel and the slightly lethargic responses. While the Corsa feels distinctly grown up on the road, the Fiesta feels very much more young at heart. There's no two ways about it. This is a very enjoyable little car to drive and there are a variety of reasons for this. For starters, the steering reacts far more quickly than the Corsa's. The heftier weighting makes it feel more assured and the detailed feedback that you get through the wheel makes you feel much more connected to the road. Meanwhile, the crisp body control and strong grip help the Fiesta feel much more eager to change direction than the Corsa. It's this pointy, eager, agile feel that really makes it a joy to drive. It's one of those cars that no matter whether you're wanging along your favourite back road or simply plodding through town, it just puts a smile on your face. And that fun doesn't come at the expense of comfort either. Okay, admittedly, this Fiesta isn't the most comfortable Fiesta we've ever driven, and that's because the ST Line X Edition has tuned sport suspension and massive 18 inch alloy wheels. However, it's still impressively comfy given how sporty it feels, and importantly, it also has the course matched every step of the way on that score. 
You'll notice that we've got a manual gearbox in this car instead of the auto and the engine is the 155 horsepower mild hybrid version so it wouldn't be fair on the Vauxhall to compare them. The Ford is faster. However, even when judged in isolation, this powertrain is enormously impressive. You feel the benefit of the electric assistance when you're pulling away, contributing further to the Fiesta's generally very eager up and atom character. And the regenerative braking gently feeds energy back into the battery in a really smooth, unobtrusive way. There's very little to separate our two contenders. Quality, cost, technology, practicality, safety and equipment. It is all neck and neck. Until you get out onto the road and then there is clearly only one winner. Yes, the Corsa impresses with its comfort and refinement, but so does the Fiesta. And it also manages to combine that with a level of engagement few cars at any money can match. And that engagement results in not only a feeling of fun, but also of safety and satisfaction. The Corsa is closer to the Fiesta than it ever has been in terms of talent. But if your overriding goal is to save a couple or few hundred pounds on your super mini purchase, then the Corsa will serve you very well. For us, the Fiesta still sits at the summit of the super mini spectrum. Which car would your money go on? Let us know in the comments and remember to give us a like and subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel. And when searching for your next car, remember to visit cargurus.co.uk where you'll find great deals from top rated dealers.